guys, welcome back to my channel. I decided to do this in two parts. The first part I did in the studio, which you can see if you click in the corner above. So I got my negatives back from the lab and they looked really, really dark when I scanned them. So I was really, really sad because it was a really nice shoot, but I managed to save it. I will show you how I fixed these at the end of the video. But first things first, here's part two of the behind the scenes.
So now I'm gonna show you what I saw when I was crying before when I scanned my negatives. And that was this and this. Okay, let me show you what I saw when I scanned it. So actually this one is already edited a little bit. So yeah, quite dark. You can see that the blacks are gone. Here you can see, and it's much grainier. And this is the worst one. <laughs> I really, really didn't um, light meter this one correctly. And the reason why I did it incorrectly this time is because I have a new light meter. And of course I didn't look at the manual and I just started using it. It looked easy enough and I guess I totally forgot <laughs> to open up the metering, um, how do you say, the, the cap of the meter. I actually did manage to do it correctly in the studio, so I don't know why I forgot it outside. I guess I was just too caught up in the whole posing situation and also it was really cold. So, you know, sometimes you mess up and this is the result. So let me show you a bit more. I think these were, I mean, these were especially quite dark. So let me show you what I did. So usually when, I mean, actually I've never underexposed this much film. So I thought that they were all kind of lost and I couldn't really save them anymore. But um, I work a lot with curves and with levels to get my colors right. Uh, use these methods of levels and curves and all that to bring the picture alive. So let me show you how it turned out. I mean, it's still not great. On the left, you see the new one. So as you can see, the blacks are still not, don't have enough range in it because I mean, there is no information there. And it also has a lot of grain and things like that. But I actually like that. And it does have a really raw feel to it to underexpose your film. It reminds me of the old hip hop ads in the Source magazine. It's like a Mob Deep cover or something. <laughs> those colors are super grainy and yeah it's, it, it does work and I can kind of show you how I did it but I actually use two programs for that I usually start in capture one and then I just do a basic gradation um, adjustment for that so let me quickly try and show you how I did it well, first of all I'm just going to drag the blacks a little bit darker the shadow is a little bit lighter. I'm going to add some contrast. And then we go to the light balance, which is the most hard part. And you actually won't get it right. Because if you drag it all the way to um, where it gets a little bit warmer, you can see that there's a lot of red in the picture. I mean, you could try to set the white balance. But because it's so overexposed, it won't do it in the right way, I think, I don't know. See, it doesn't, it immediately jumps to a red color. But uh, I like the bluish moody vibe anyway. So we leave it on this for now. Now I'm going to curves. Okay, so I'm gonna drag the blacks a little bit more dark. And what I want is to open up a little bit of information here. So I'm actually not repeating everything as I did it uh, to get the picture here, but I'm just gonna go as I would do it normally and just do it again, you know? So maybe it won't look the same, but it, at least you can make it work, you know? So I'm going to drag this a little bit up. Now we see the highlights are too light. So I'm going to push down the 
highlights again, and the shadows again, and I mean, I'm just gonna like. Do bits and bits and bits until I have sort of the contours and feel that I want. Yeah, we're getting there a little bit. It's hard to talk and to do this at the same time. Okay, and some levels. And levels is very easy if you want to manage the color. So. Let's do that. First you go for the red. Add a little bit more red in the picture. Add a little bit more green. And uh, drag down some of the yellow. Okay, this one it's tricky because if you drag the shadows of the magenta all the way down you see immediately a big magenta cast and the whole picture turns quite more dark and I always try to do a little little bit and also in the mid middle this is still too light the whites so I'm dragging I think this is already looking quite good. It looks quite similar already, if you see it like that. This one is a little bit more mm, warm. But I actually did that in Lightroom. Let's do another one. So, this one. Look at these two. I did a lot of adjustments on this one. Because, I mean, I can try to do it again. And you see, it's too dark. I'm just not a fan of things that are too dark. I do like moody pictures, but in color, I'm just like, I don't know. It's difficult. I, I don't like when the colors get so desaturated. I love bright colors, so it's always very difficult for me to see. I didn't get my colors right. <laughs> nope. Mm, this is looking cute. No. So what I actually did with this one, I made some presets in Lightroom. I have some really cute little presets there that give it a little bit more of a vibe and i was just playing around with those so i have two different ones like this is the original one and then this is the preset one so i will uh, maybe make the presets as something that you can buy. I don't know if people want to do that, but I have a lot of cool ones already. And I will show you this ones more in depth in another video. Let's not spend too much time on that one right now. So this is the before. So you can leave it like that, I guess. I mean, maybe a little white here. And maybe some saturation. So this is actually a little saved picture in my opinion. I mean, a black is still too black, but you can definitely use it like that. And even to use it in black and white can really, really be nice. If you look at that, that's just really cool. Um, but yeah, I just chose to do it like this because it's a bit more moody and I love pink sky. So here we have this one. I really loved this picture. It already looks really cool in black and white, I thought. So um, here it's not that contrasted yet because I didn't do anything. I always scan my film in really um, low contrast because that gives you a bit more information to work with, even though there is no information. <laughs> and yeah, 
So this is kind of how it can look in black and white. And here is the edited one. As you can see, I added a lot of uh, things in the face because some parts were too dark and a little bit messy. Here you can see them both. I think they're both look pretty nice. So I'm glad that I didn't completely lose my shoot. So this was the worst. I couldn't get the scan right. It was full of dust. It was just horrible to scan. So I had to really, really edit it. And this is how I fixed it. If you look at them together, it's such a huge difference. And I actually think this one is looking a little bit too, too orange. But I mean, it's definitely looking much, much better than the left one. And if all else fails, just put it in black and white because that looks really dope. So yeah, that's actually how I did it. And yeah, it, it's difficult to get it right when, uh, when it's too underexposed, but it also has a cool feel to it. We managed to make it work.